And we're here again at the uh, 2015 Organic Conference in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I'm talking with John at the, from Cosmos Compost. John, tell me a little bit about your uh, operation here. You're a, a conventional farmer, dairy farmer, but you're making organic compost. Yes. Could um, you take me through that process, please? Yeah. Um, I'm a fifth-generation dairy farmer, and that's what's in my blood. And that's my main thing is creating milk. Um, but we also have this other part that comes out of the cow that uh, was a problem for us. So where do, what do we do with all this manure? So uh, a number of years ago, 25 years ago, we decided to start composting it and sell it, uh, which was a novel idea at the time and, and still is. And um, it's a, a very good product. As mm -hmm. we farmers always knew, <coughs> manure is a great thing. And uh, so we, uh, we've been doing that for a long time. Profits with poop. I, it's, it's kind <laughs> of a concept. So this is your, your setup here. Yep. So now your cows, let, let's go through that. Your cows eat it, deposit it. You have a flush barn. Yep. The flush barn uh, puts moisture in the soil or puts moisture in the manure or what does that do? It's a, it's a way of getting the manure out of the barn. That's the only thing. That's so the, the only reason. The flow of the water cleans the alleys. It goes into a tank. It's agitated, pumped up across these screens. Mm -hmm. We separate the liquids and the solids. Uh, it's for handling purposes. So we put the liquids out in our lagoons and we, we spread that out on our fields for fertilizer. Okay. So that satisfies our needs for fertilizer. Then we have all these solids. What do we do with all the solids? So we compost that. So we take these solids, build windrows, and uh, after three months it creates compost. After we turn it and take temperatures and do the things that we need to do to it. And uh, at the end of three months it's done. It's about half the volume it was when it started. Uh -huh. So we've reduced that. And then we've, we've created a stable product that doesn't smell, doesn't have any weed seeds, and people that use it love it. Okay, so you were explaining earlier a little bit to me about the process here. You have three different soils here. Uh, one is one is the compost, yep. and then potting soils. Yes. So, what is the ingredients in all these? It's it's all it's the compost, and then you have special additives that you put in the other the potting soils. Yeah, it's uh, this is very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not like smoke and mirrors. And uh, so you, we're creating a growing medium that uh, is stable, that is successful in greenhouses, and uh, that people can use and feel comfortable with. So how does, how does a conventional farmer become an organic poop producer? Okay. You know, I mean, because there's, there's certifications involved. Yep. So how does that separate the process for you? I mean, uh, explain that because it's, it's kind sure. of hard to, to, to comprehend being a conventional farmer and then all of a sudden you're on the organic side on one farm. Yes. The National Organic Practices Standards uh, require uh, the process is very, very important. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing that's important. It's the material is not. It's the process, was why I was explaining. So National Organic Practices Standards say that you take any kind of manure and spread it on your fields. If you're an organic farmer, that's fine. There's no problem with that. So if uh, I live next to a large chicken farmer and I'm an organic producer, I can get all that manure that I want from that chicken farmer and put it on my fields, and that's fine. The only problem with spreading manure on your fields, well, there's a couple problems. One is you cannot harvest the crop for 120 days. Okay. So if you're growing vegetables and they, they uh, take less than 120 days to uh, mature, um, you can't use it. The other thing is you get a lot of weed seeds with manure. Okay. And um, so uh, that's the scourge of every organic farmer, every farmer that's ever farmed is just the weeds. And uh, so by composting it, um, you've solved a couple problems. One, you've gotten rid of the weed seeds, so you've got a, basically a weed-free product to put on your soil. Okay. And the other thing is that if you use composted manure rather than straight manure, you can harvest it the next day. Okay. And that's the National Organic Practices Standards. And um, so um, I didn't write them, right. and I didn't make them, but in my opinion, it is... It is a way that organic farmers deal in a real world. Mm -hmm. And they need nutrients, they need manure, they need this stuff. And uh, with the restrictions on other things, this is the best way to get the nutrients is manure. Okay. Does, and here we go, I don't like speaking with the government involved, but yep. does the government come out and test your material at all? Or do they just take your word that it's organic? The government really is not involved okay. at all. Um, the um, it's the certifying agents, agencies uh, like MOSA and uh, Oregon Tilth and a bunch of other ones uh, 
they're the ones that go to the farms and determine the process and the material that you use right. and stuff like that. So when um, somebody uses our product, our compost or our potting soil under our name, which is Cosmo, um, they then have to tell that to the certifier. Okay. And then the certifier comes back to me and asks me my process, asks me the ingredients that I put in the potting soils, and um, then they give me an okay. Uh -huh. And so I'm not certified organic, but I'm uh, the materials that I use are suitable for use in all organic production systems. Okay, very and, good. And we're checked on a very regular basis. Checks and balances with yep. all the processes. Yep. Do you sell this in stores or is it just at your facility? We, s we have a different, uh, like, landscape areas and landscape suppliers because we're also into that. Okay. People use it for that. Okay. But uh, generally, um, as the world has changed uh, from everybody uh, going through distributors and through stores and stuff like that uh, to direct marketing, which is basically what I do, uh, people will email me, and that's changed uh, over the last 10 years. 75% of my business is email rather than uh, telephone call. Right. And uh, so it's pretty direct. And uh, so they just need to call me or email me or look me up on my website. And um, we sell two things. We sell a product and we sell a service. Okay. And our service has to be as good as our product. Correct. And, uh, so if somebody calls, you'll get a hold of me. I will get back to you uh, promptly. I will get the stuff in the mail or get it shipped to you. Uh, like I said, I will, and uh, it'll cost you what I said. And if you're dissatisfied with it, we will give you your money back or we'll replace it, whatever you need to do. But okay. uh, the other half is service. Right. The service is a big key in the industry today. Yes. Um, so could somebody, uh, a household uh, person that wanted to get your potting soil, contact you, come up to the farm and, and get their, they wanted a truckload, like a pickup truckload? Yeah. It's compost. Uh, it's, uh, we... That's our main thing that we make, and that's the basis for everything that we sell. And um, we do it according to the National Organic Practices Standards, and uh, we do it professionally. So you can always be assured that it's the same product. So this is just plain manure? It's plain manure that's been composted. And, and that's the process where it sits on the ground and, and gets turned and heats up and breaks down? Right. Okay. What's the next soil you have then? The next soil is our green potting soil. Notice the green bowl. And um, this is a, uh, a mixture of peat, compost, perlite, and um, a 1% fertilizer mix made up of uh, meat and bone meal, uh, rock phosphate, kelp, and lime. Kelp? Where yes. Kelp? Uh, kelp is an OMRI approved uh, product uh, that we uh, buy at our local co op. And this is our, our blue potting mix. Notice the blue bowl. Um, this has sand in it. So it's similar to the green, but it has sand. And you need sand in a mix to keep the uh, nutrients in the profile of the container. So if you have a large container, a large pot, and you water it or it sits there and gets rained on a lot, uh, the nutrients might migrate to the bottom, might migrate to the top. If you have sand in it, it keeps the nutrients in the whole profile. And then the, the uh, roots of the plant can find the nutrients. This is my farm. I live behind these trees. Uh, this is a barn that burned down uh, maybe 25 years ago, I guess it was. And uh, so then we built this place. And, uh, and that's how we decided to compost. So this is where our cows are milked. This is the milking parlor. These are our cows. Um, they're constantly making new products, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time. And uh, we remove the, the product the manure from the barns with water. And um, so that's flushed to a low point in the barn, pumped up across these separators. So these are called inclined screen separators. Liquid then goes through the screen, goes out to our lagoons, and the, the solids then collect here. We take the solids, we bring them up here to the compost site, build windrows, and uh, once the uh, windrows get up to 131 degrees, we turn it with this uh, self-propelled compost turner and that uh, takes the inside of the row and puts it on the outside. So we're constantly aerating the pile to make it aerobic. And then we get a finished compost. And that's this stuff right here, or this stuff.